We're now gonna continue this idea of looking at motivational interviewing with case management in a correction setting, specifically probation and juvenile justice services. So Zach's back. And what we wanna to try to do is kind of go through, if you will, the arc of how we might engage with a youth from kind of beginning to end in a case management uh, approach. Does that sound all right to you? Sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna be the case manager, you'll be the youth. And uh, I'm gonna start with some small talk and then maybe we'll talk about a couple of goals and just kind of move through the what land, why land, how land. Sounds good. How's that sound? So let's imagine you're coming into my office and I say, hey Zach, how you been? Doing well. Yeah? yeah. Tell me about what's going well in your life. Well, you know, I, I, um, I'm going to school. Nice. Once every other day. Okay. So that's good for me. All right. And I'm passing about half my classes. It's an improvement. Congratulations. Only smoking marijuana about once a week. So that's good from every day. Right. So you made, you made some good progress. Yeah. Way to go. What does that feel like to be making steps forward in your life? What are some of the benefits for you, like emotionally? Um, it feels good, but at times I, when I get stressed, I, the first thing I want to go back to is, is smoking. Right. Okay. So let me do this. Maybe what we could do is transition for a second and just kind of hear about your goals for our time today. So what are two or three things you think we should focus on? You know what? I want to play. I want to pass all my classes and be able to play um, college football. Ah, all right. So you've got a goal. You want to play college football and to do that, you need to pass your classes. Yep. Any other goals you'd like to talk about today? You know, I want to be able to stay with my family and have, have a good relationship with them. And sometimes they don't like when I'm out smoking. So that I would like to improve my relationship with my family as well. So there's a few goals here to kind of slow down on the smoking still, do better in school, improve kind of your relationship with your family. Correct. So those are three. Can I add one? Yeah. I think the other thing is just kind of, you know, staying consistent with the therapy that you've been asked yes. to go to. Right. So can we add that to the agenda? Sure. All right. I'm going to pause here for a second. So what have we tried to do? So the first thing we're doing is this idea of illicit provide illicit. And I'm really trying to engage Zach in his, you know, his participation in his health and his kind of proceeding and, and uh, doing better. That didn't come off very well. I'm going to say that again. So what we're really trying to do is get Zach to take ownership for his goals and his progress. And I'm doing, I'm listening from him first. And notice he didn't mention that maybe there's more that needs to be done with his therapy. So I just gently introduced that, said, how do you feel about that? So that would be elicit and providing ideas to stay with his therapy. And then that last provide would be to come back and say, what do you think about, you know, staying with therapy? And he said, yeah. So, so far we've got four areas of agreement in the what land. Now I'm going to try to get him to prioritize which is most important. And then we're going to try to elicit some of that motivation. And any reactions thus far from a case manager perspective? Oh, that was good. I mean, you gave me an idea of, of engaging in therapy and, and you listened and, and you expounded on that. It was good. All right. So let me, we're going to stay with what and we're now going to prioritize. So Zach, you mentioned a couple of things that you want to work on. Slowing down on smoking, continue to do better in school, uh, doing better with your family, and also, you know, following up therapy. Yeah. Where do you think is most important for us to focus right now? You know what? Well, what I want to do is I really want to play college football. But in order for me to get reach that goal, I need to probably be in more engaged in therapy and pass my class in school. Okay. So getting that therapy taken care of and also passing your classes. So those are the two main ones. And of those, which do you think we should maybe spend a few minutes on right now? Um, I say passing my classes. Passing your classes. Yep. All right. I think I know the answer to this, but... For you, what are the top two or three reasons it's important to pass your classes? Oh. Yeah, I don't value school very much, but I know in order for me to be able to play, I need to go to school. You gotta do it. Yep. And then sometimes in a list of provide a list, I think, oh, I got one answer. He told me one thing that he wants to pass his classes. So I'm gonna jump right to problem solving and start telling him how to pass school but that's not the idea in a motivational interviewing. I want to elicit and extend and empathize till almost it's exhaustion. So I'm going to stay with this idea of eliciting other motivations from Zach. So the more he's able to offer ideas and hear those back into his own kind of head, his own heart, then he'll own them more. So I'm going to keep playing with this for a second. All right. So one idea, like, I like how you said that Zach is that you don't really identify a school, but you know, you need to do it so that you can be successful 
something like football. Yeah. I like that. So let me ask you this. What would be some other motivations for you to do well in school? Like how might it benefit you in terms of like family life? Um, yes, because they, they want to, me to go to school and pass, so that, that'll help, yep. which goes into that other goal. Um, well, specifically, how would it help? You know what, because they're always telling me I need to go to school, so and I'm, and I'm resistant, and so I think if I go and I'm able to pass and be successful, and then I think that they would be proud of me that I'm going to school. Ah, I heard maybe two things. One, they'd be proud of you, which you kind of smiled when you said yeah, that. Yeah. And the other thing, they'd probably be more in harmony. They wouldn't be on your back all the right. time. Correct. And would that be good for you? Yes, it'd be real good. How so? Well, I'm just, every day I don't want to go to school and they are just harping on me and I, and I think that they would back off and they would be, again, they would be able to trust me because any time I say I'm going to school, they don't, they don't believe me. There's a lot of benefits. Yes. I mean, it sets you up for football, proves your trust with your family, uh, there's more harmony and peace. Any other advantages of going to school, do you think? Yeah, and, and then football's not gonna last forever, so I've talked to you know, about my future, being able to set me up with a job mm. when football is over with. Yeah, so it's a, it's a nice plan B. Like, yeah. So even when football's done, you'll have something to kind of make some money and buy the things you need. That's correct. All right, so those are that's a lot of motivation. Let me ask you on a different side. Let's say you don't go to school. Let's say you just blow it off and yeah. you kind of continue on the path of saying it's just not worth it. Yeah. What might go wrong? Like, it, uh, a lot of things. I mean, I think that I could get um, possibly get taken away from home. I could the judge could give me some more. Um, consequences uh, and there would be a way that they would try to get me to go to school. It could open up a lot of things that I don't want to All right. go. Notice what we're doing here, we're still in this idea of why land. We've been pursuing like what are the advantages of school and now we've just flipped it to talk about like if things if you don't go to school, what problems might arise? So it kind of speaks to the same kind of basic idea, but we're just kind of playing at it from different angles. So that's the change talkinator and how we might go through and you know pull out some other change talk. So now what I'm gonna do is I might still play with this. Notice who's doing all of the talking. Most of it's Zach, right? So he's talking and then I'm reflecting. So from a, the principles of MI is that I'm putting out the dots and Zach is connecting those dots. I'm reflecting those so that he really develops ownership. Now I'm going to transition from why land to how land and then eventually going to wrapping it up to just kind of show what MI looks like from an arc perspective. So Zach, you mentioned a bunch of things here that if you don't go to school, uh, the court might get more involved in your life. They might force you to do it. They might lock you up. You don't want that. And the good things about going to school, even though you don't like to, if you forced yourself to do it, it might say you have football, economic opportunities like job possibilities, more harmony with your family, more peace. They would trust you more, so you'd probably get more license to do some of the things you want. It seems like I'm missing a thing or two, but those are some of the reasons you mentioned. Anything else I, I missed there? No. So is that enough kind of motivation for us to talk about how you can do the difficult thing of routinely going to school? Yes. Okay. So you're open to that. So now what I would do, I'm actually going to pause here because we have a section on how to engage in how land and how we might help Zach figure out some things that he can do. So again, we'll use Alyssa provide Alyssa and would explore maybe where he's been successful in school, when he's had a near miss, like he almost didn't go, but then he ended up going, or how he got back on track. We could also talk about some of the times when he hasn't gone to really try to learn what Zach already knows. And so there's a Howland section that talks all about that, but we'll kind of save that for now. Um, all right, Zach, you're a supervisor. You've been on the front lines for a bit. How does that interview feel to you as far as a credible approach to working with the youth? Really well. I mean, you, you gave me a voice and I was, and then you gave me options. You said, what will it lead to if I do go? And then you also said, what will happen if I don't go to school? Okay. So, 
it painted a picture of what would happen or right. what wouldn't happen. Yeah, and that's good. Anything you'd want to change or anything, from, again, from your perspective, you'd want to maybe tweak? There doesn't have to be. I'm just curious. No, no. All right. Well, we'll do bad practice in a second okay. so we can All maybe right. make it worse. All right. All right. You good with it? Yeah. All right. Thank you.